Hello and welcome back to a new video. So recently I've been playing around with this Live View Solo device and it's come to my conclusion that it's not very good. I'm very disappointed with it and I can't really recommend buying it for yourself. So as someone who does IRL streaming outside, getting the tech side of things sorted and stable and ready to go for doing outside streaming is probably one of the most challenging parts of doing IRL streaming. And one of the most popular items that a lot of the popular Twitch streamers use is the Live View encoder thing. And the unique ability it has is the ability to be able to combine and bind multiple SIM connections and Wi-Fi hotspots together to create one really strong and stable connection. When you're outside doing a live stream, having a stable connection is one of the most important things. There's nothing more annoying when you're doing a live stream and it's taken you like an hour to get up to a couple hundred viewers. And then you lose connection and then you get disconnected. And then when you've reconnected, you've found that you've lost nearly half of your viewers and they're not coming back. Usually when a live stream disconnects, a lot of people just lose interest and they think, oh, live stream's over, I'm gonna go to bed now. And they get annoyed, they click off and they don't come back. So the ability to be able to bond multiple connections has been something that I thought was really necessary when it comes to live streaming. And that's one of the main reasons I bought this Live View. Now this Live View was extremely expensive and it's just a massive hassle to get it working and running. And you need to buy so many other things to accompany it for it to actually be useful. It's gotten to a point for me personally where I actually prefer just streaming off of my phone because it's a lot more convenient. And the cost of this thing is nearly $2,000. Not just for this thing, but for everything combined. So for the Live View encoder, it would cost you about 800 pounds. I'm paying it using credit. So over four years, I'm paying about 20 pounds a month. And in total, it's gonna cost me a thousand pounds after four years. And you also need to get the LRT bonding service, which costs $440. So it's about $1,000 plus $440. Then obviously you need to buy a camera and you need battery banks and cables. So all of that is going to cost you probably over $2,000. When in comparison, if you just stream off of your phone, it's going to cost you nothing. Because, I mean, you have a phone already unless you need to buy a second phone then even if you have to buy a second phone, you can get a brand new iPhone 14 for half the price of what a Live View streaming setup is gonna cost you. And I wouldn't mind paying all this extra money if it actually worked well and it made my live streams a lot better. Unfortunately, I can't really say that it does make my live streams way better. I actually found that even with the bonding service, my live streams seem to be worse. And here's my top five reasons why this thing sucks. So number one, the most annoying thing about it is it does this weird glitching thing. I'll show you some examples, but this usually happens when either there's some kind of vibration or you're running or jumping or you're riding a bicycle. And what happens is it kind of does this weird glitching thing where the footage goes all gray and then starts stretching or parts of the footage goes green and then it starts stretching and lagging. Hopefully when I'm streaming in the streets of Bangkok, it won't be as bad as this, it'll be a lot better. UK internet just sucks. I know it's actually better on my phone. <laughs> my phone didn't do this. The streets of Bangkok. And this is really frustrating and annoying, especially if you're doing vigorous activity. For example, I was riding a bike because I wanted to do some biking streams. And for some reason, every time I went over 15 miles per hour, it started to do this glitching thing where the image was all stretched 
and it just couldn't maintain a smooth video output. And it, when I stopped or I slowed down, it would go back to normal. And same thing happened on foot. Every time I tried running, or if I tried jumping off a little ledge and there's a bit of a shake in my bag, because you need to have all this in your bag, you can't really carry it in your hand. Well, I guess you could. I mean, you could get a camera and maybe you could sellotape it to the outside of the live view and then have a little cable that goes into it, but that would be kind of silly to carry this thing like that. It's gonna go in, it's gonna go into your backpack. And when it's in your backpack, when you're moving around quickly, there's gonna be shaking. And it seems like every time there's shaking or vibrating, it messes up the live stream. And this doesn't happen on my phone for some reason. If I stream from my phone, I can run, I can jump, I can ride a bicycle. And this weird glitching thing, I think they call it data moshing. This weird data moshing thing never happens on my phone. But for some reason, it happens really easily and often on this expensive piece of kit. It's fine if you're just going to stand still and do stationary IRL streams, but if you're like me and you want to do a bit of running or some action or some kind of physical activity where you're moving around quickly, then your bag is going to shake and then you're going to get this weird stretching thing and it just ruins the live stream completely. But what's even more annoying is how much stuff you need in addition to the live view to actually get this thing working. Instead of just using a phone which has everything built into it, so a phone has a camera built into it, it has a Wi-Fi connection or SIM card connection, it has everything you need to do a live stream straight from the device. So if you're streaming from your phone, all you need is the phone and maybe a battery bank if you're going to do a really long live stream. But to live stream using the live view, so first of all you would need the live view, then you need a camera, and then you need some battery banks so you can actually do a long live stream. Without the battery bank, the go, I mean, the live view solo can last for about two hours, but your camera probably won't last for nearly two hours. So you're going to need a battery bank or two. In my case, I got three battery banks. And then you're going to need a load of cables. So you need all these cables. You need a HDMI cable to connect the camera to the thing. You need a USB-C -C cable to connect the battery banks to the camera. And you also need this special camera here, I mean this special cable here, which plugs into the live view to the battery bank. It's kind of annoying charging the, the live view because only a few battery banks work with it. If you have one of these normal battery banks for charging tablets or phones, it's not gonna be able to charge the live view. You need one of these beefy battery banks that has a, what's it called? A 12 volt, DC or AC output and then you need one of these special cables it's like a round a round cable that goes into it and then that plugs into the, the live view it's kind of frustrating how they didn't make it so you could charge to the live view using a USB-C but it seems like the live view needs a lot of power to be able to charge here is the battery charger for the live view that you plug it into the mains with and it comes with it comes with this power brick like a laptop so it needs a lot of power to be able to charge up and even with it plugged into this battery bank it doesn't actually charge it just kind of drains battery very very slowly so i could live stream for about i think four or five hours using this battery bank but eventually you'll end up losing power and it will shut itself off because this battery bank is not actually fast enough or powerful enough to be able to charge it it just prevents it from draining as fast as it was draining so you need to connect all this up this has to go all into your backpack this needs to go into your backpack and it's just kind of frustrating to use because you're going to have all these cables coming out of your backpack and then trying to move the camera around trying to change camera angles maybe you want to film yourself and then switch to filming what's in front of you it's kind of annoying to do that because you've got all these cables coming out it really reduces mobility in comparison with streaming straight off your phone where you don't actually have to have any cables and you can just have it on a selfie stick and just be able to move it around freely without being hindered or constrained by cables coming out, it really feels a lot better and a lot easier to just stream from your phone. Another annoying thing that I found, which is more like a, a unique example situation where if you use a GoPro to stream with, you have to turn off stabilization because when stabilization is on, for some reason, the audio gets all out of sync when you use it to stream from a live view. 
So I have to turn the stabilization off to get in sync audio, but then the footage is really shaky. This is probably why no live streamers on Twitch use a GoPro to stream with. They all use that same exact same white Sony camera, you know, that Sony action camera. And the reason why is because that has inbuilt stabilization that doesn't desync the audio when it's switched on. And it has a nice wide field of view which I should be able to, I should really think about getting one of those if I was serious about streaming with the live view again. The GoPro isn't really a great solution, but it was the only camera I had that I could test out the live view with. I have thought about getting the Sony Action Cam to give the live view another chance, but even with the, the Sony Action Cam, I'd have to have all these cables coming out into my bag and that weird data moshing thing is still gonna happen if I run or if I jump. As for the multiple bonded connections, I don't even as for the multiple bonded connections, I don't even feel like it's that important. So if you're in a city, I'm in Bangkok right now, and I've got excellent 5G coverage on my phone at almost all times. And I did a live stream on my phone, I never got disconnected once because the connection's so strong here. So having three really strong connections isn't really that much better than just having one really strong connection when you're in a city like Bangkok and you might be thinking well what if you're not in Bangkok and if if what if you're in an area where the connections are not great well I tried that out as well when I was in England in the countryside I tried the live view and I was still getting disconnected so it seems like having multiple weak connections is just as unreliable as having one weak connection and having multiple strong connections isn't really any different to having one really strong connection. I don't really notice any difference. I did two live streams in Bangkok, one with my phone with one SIM card and one with the live view with three SIM cards. And the one with the phone that only had one SIM card, it didn't disconnect once. And the one with the live view also didn't disconnect. So it's not really an issue. It's not really necessary to have multiple SIM cards when you're in a city with a good connection. So I feel like I wasted my money paying for the LRT bonding service. It's not really, it doesn't really make the live stream better and the live view gear makes the live streaming experience much worse for me as the streamer and it makes it much worse for the viewer as well because you keep getting this weird glitch thing where the footage keeps stretching or going green and weird. Maybe I don't have it set up properly. Maybe there are settings that I need to alter to make this a better experience. Maybe I need a different camera that's not the GoPro. But from what I've experienced using the Live View Solo so far, I don't really see any reason to use it over just streaming from my phone. I went back to streaming on my Flip Z, which is really good because when you stream using Streamlabs, you can actually close the phone into its flipped form and just have it as like a really small square thing which doesn't really look like it's filming and then you can put that onto a selfie stick and it's really small and convenient and the connection is really good because i've got a 5g sim card connected into it and i feel like that works a lot better than using this whole live view setup with all this gear and battery banks and stuff like that it's much more easier to stream from and it's obviously a lot cheaper than having to spend nearly $2,000 on all this stuff. So I kind of regret buying the Live View. It hasn't really made my live streams any better. In fact, it's made them worse. So for those reasons, I can't really recommend buying one of these if you're interested in doing IRL live streaming. And I'm going to have to find a way to sell it now because it's kind of useless and I don't see myself using it ever again.